you through all the stuff and what it is and you know as, as we go through we're gonna basically use everything so this is just some corn flour in a pouch here so I've just got um, chucks so I don't know what you guys call it um, but we call it chucks here so that's just some corn flour in there this is my little uh, buzzy bee that holds my acupuncture needle in case we get some um, air bubbles in our gum paste got a smoother I like to use the clear one so I can see what's going on underneath you definitely don't need to use the clear one but I, my preference is to use a clear one um, and you can get these from my online store if you're interested this is a paint palette um, we've got some petal dust this is dogwood brown and baby pink Um, some edible art colors. So these are made um, by Sweet Sticks and they're made in Australia. They're Australian made and I love them. They're, they're beautiful and they paint on beautifully. And the thing about them I love so much is that because you can paint on something like this and then you can pick it up and then be able to stick it straight onto your cake without worrying that um, it's going to smudge. All right. Let's put that there. Pencil, water brush, Frilling tool, you don't have to use this. You can also use um, like a skewer or the back of a paintbrush. That's not really essential. Um, rolling pin, some paint brushes of different sizes here. Exacto knife, uh, did I say ball tool? I can't remember. Ball tool and some gum paste. So you don't need much gum paste. By the way, I forgot to mention to you guys, if you go to my website on my online store and you can do this after, after the fact, um, if you go to my online store, there is a free tutorial of this step by step for you to download with the tools and materials list and everything like that and it has the template that I'm going to use today as well so this is um, this is the template so this is from an artist um, that I downloaded off Instagram uh, sorry not Instagram um, Pinterest and I can't remember um, her name now but um, it's credited inside my notes but she does beautiful beautiful drawings and all I've done is just traced traced it here with baking paper so you can see it and this is just with pencil a regular 2b pencil um, it's non-toxic so don't worry okay so I've just traced it over and this is how we're going to transfer it onto the gum paste so let's move everything aside all this stuff so what I'm going to do now is get my gum paste and I'm going to roll that out and I want it a little bit thick I don't want it too thin okay give that a good knead So I rolled it about, this would be three to five millimeters thick, I would say. Okay, so you don't want it too thin. You want it a little bit thicker so you have time to move it around. Um, and when, sorry, not time to move it around so that you, when you pick it up, it's not a problem. You can move it around without it getting kind of stretched out of place. Okay, so we've got our image there. Okay, pencil side down. You want to press that there. So typically, if this was on a cake where the fondant is already firm, what I could do is just get one of these tools and kind of scratch and transfer, transfer the image across. But because this is fresh, if I did that and I scratched and I tried to transfer the image, the image will transfer, but also all these scratch marks will also transfer. So we can't really use that to scratch. Um, so we're going to use um, our smoother. And this is why I like it, because I can see what's going on. And I'm going to use this just to rub. If you don't have this smoother, what you can do is use a rolling pin and you can, you can do that as well. But I find doing this, you can, you can see it tends to move the paper a little bit, so I try and avoid that. And I'm applying a little bit of gentle pressure because I want the pencil to transfer. Okay, so now before you just go and lift everything up, let's take a peek and check that it's actually transferred. Because the last thing you want to do is lift that up and go, oh crap, it hasn't transferred properly and then you have to try and you know, reline it up. So now I know it has transferred. All good on that side. And by transferred, I mean as long as you can see it, okay? We're gonna lift that up. Okay, and now we're gonna start cutting it out. So if you live in a more humid country and you find like, oh, this is still really soft, I would suggest you give it a couple more, couple minutes to kind of firm up because it makes cutting it a lot easier. Um, this is a bit soft for me today, but I'm gonna show you how to, how to handle it. So I've got my X-Acto knife. Okay, and I like to put it on a board like this so that when I'm cutting it, I can just move it around without having to pick it up and kind of destroy the shape. Okay, so we're going to start cutting and you want to cut 
about one millimeter outside. I want to show you. I want to outline that and I'm going to bring it a bit closer. Okay. This gives us space to outline the shape properly. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that. And this may seem time consuming, but this shape is not actually very complex. And if you're doing a lot of it, then maybe you want to invest in, you know, making yourself a custom cutter. There is a cookie cutter set out there called, oh, what is it called? Um, I think it's like build your own custom cookie cutter set or something like that, where you can actually um, build your own custom cookie cutter. So if you're doing a lot of these, maybe you're putting them on a fondant cookie or something, then maybe it might be worth investing or in a kit like that and making your own shape. So I'm removing portions at a time because it makes it more manageable. If you go around and you try and trace it, it just doesn't end well and it tends to stretch the gum paste out of shape. So I remove one section at a time like that. And any bits that are a bit sharp, like you can see here, it's a little bit sharp. What you can do is just use your hands and cheat and just tap it in. And even the hands here, I would just tap that in. And roll it around like that. Okay, and then we're gonna continue doing this. So we're gonna start dusting and giving him some shade. So you can see here on this one and even in the image, a lot of the shading is like under the chin and then along the ears here. So that's what I'm gonna try and um, replicate here. So we've got some dogwood brown. So I love this color, it's a beautiful color. Oops, there you go. I'm gonna use a nice soft brush. Okay, so I like to use a flat brush rather than a rounded brush because I, sh I find that the rounded brush doesn't, when you use a rounded brush, for example, like this, to dust big areas like that, I find it leaves a lot of streaky marks. So I like to use something round like this. Um, you know what I found is really, really good is if you use um, like a makeup brush, the one that you use for eyeshadows and stuff. So if you can get a cheap one of those, um, they actually spread really nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna get some color, dust most of it off. And then let's go around the edges of the ears first. And I wanna keep within the pencil lines, try not to go outside the pencil lines. Um, but if you go out of the pencil lines a little bit, it's not that big of a deal because when we outline it later, you're not really gonna see it. Okay, right there. Okay, and then a little bit under there where the chin is. I don't know, do rabbits have chins? Not quite sure. And the thing with dusting um, that I, I have a bad habit of, and I'm sure a lot of you would can relate, is that I always tend to over dust because I dust and I'm like, I don't see anything. Go back and do a bit more. Still don't see anything. And then before I know it, I'm like, oh, it's black. So just go easy. And I always, always take a step back now and try and evaluate before I do anything further. Okay, so we've got some shading on his ears and under his chin here. And then along the hands or the paws. And then we're gonna start um, doing the pink. So I've got the pink and we're gonna brush on the inside. So we're just gonna put a bit more. I'm always very light-handed with these things because the dust, um, you can always put more, but it, it is a pain to take it off. So I try and be very cautious when I do stuff like that. And 
then we're gonna give him a little bit plushy cheeks. Just a little bit. And there you go. Okay, so now we've done that, we're going to start painting his body. So let's start painting this guy. So I wanna do a light um, coat of paint first, and then I'm gonna do dark, like shade it a little bit darker on this end. So we're gonna go over and do that very light thing first. So once I've got that first coat on, I'm going to go back and make these areas a little bit darker. And it's just a matter of getting more red. And go back for a darker coat. So now once we've got that, we're going to start outlining this guy. So a bit of black, a bit of white, I'm going to mix that together. So the reason I use paint and a brush instead of an edible marker is because I want it to have that kind of artistic feel around it. If you want it to be a little bit more even and precise, then you just use an edible marker and you'll get a much more even line. But I did that on purpose because I want it to look a little bit um, illustrated. So let's move that out of the way. And we're going to start outlining uh, this. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go around and outline the pencil marks. So we're going to now do the outlines inside. And so with this outline inside the body, I don't want to go too bold. And by going too bold, I mean doing like a full straight line across. So what I'm going to do is kind of stagger the lines just a little bit, just to kind of define it, but not overdo it. So let's give that a go. And this part, you can definitely use an edible marker if you feel more confident. Okay, so I've got the gum piece. I'm gonna roll that. I'm gonna flatten that. Okay, and I wanna roll this into a really thin piece. a strip that's about a uh, centimeter wide by about six centimeters long. I usually do it by eye so I can't say for sure maybe a centimeter and a half. Okay so we've got that. So at this stage you can put this on a pedal pad with your balling tool and just ball the edges or I just use a frilling tool and I use the edge here and I just roll. and then on the other side as well. So now I've got, I've got that here. And what I'm gonna do is fold that in half. So let's. And then I'm just gonna scrunch it. So I'm gonna hold from the bottom here. And I'm just gonna scrunch it. And by scrunch it, I just mean just squish it together. Squish, squish, squish. I didn't use any water. It's fresh enough that it will stick to itself. Okay, there you go, scrunch it. And again, this is one of those things where the less you think about it, the easier it is. So let's move Mr. Bunny over here. Just check, oops, that the length is the right length. If it's too long, cut it. If it's too short, you can do two small pieces, no big deal. Okay, and I'm gonna get a bit of water. I love these, by the way. I think they're the best thing ever. Just a bit of water. 
in there. And we're going to stick that on. Okay, give it a good press. And then we're going to use our filling tool or the back of a paintbrush. And just open that a little bit. Sometimes they just get squashed when you're trying to press it down. So let's open it. All I'm doing is opening it and, and pressing it down a little bit so it sticks. Well, here I'm just manipulating it and giving it that little bit more movement. Okay, here I might tuck that up a little bit just so you can see. Okay, now he's got his ruffles, yay! Okay, and then his little tail. So his little tail, a bit of gum paste. And so to stick it onto the cake, you just need to lift it and see how it's still a little bit, it's pliable because we've rolled the gum paste a little bit thick so it doesn't dry out as fast and it doesn't crack. And so you can just pick this up like that and move it, or you can turn it around, put a bit of water there and then stick it straight onto a cake without having to worry that you're gonna smudge the paint, which is why I love using the edible art paint. But again, if you don't have it, you can definitely just use um, gel colors and a bit of vodka to mix it and paint it. So there you go, a little bunny.